This is Two Grown Ups and a Mouse, episode number nine. In this episode, we will be discussing Disney Cruise Line, specifically the Disney Dream Ship. I'm AJ. I'm Andrew. And this is Two Grown Ups and a Mouse. This is episode number nine. Today we are talking about Disney Cruise Line, but specifically the Disney Dream. Because that's the one that we've been on. Yeah. So one day we'll go on the other ones. Sure. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Well, almost definitely the fantasy. Because the dream and the fantasy are the bigger ones. Well, we might go on the other ones too because uh some of them go out of Miami. Right. South Florida, where we live. Yeah. So it's a little more convenient. But before we get into the episode, we have a couple of shout outs. First shout out is to Crazy Disney Grammar Junkies 2.0, specifically Tim and Vincent. I just want to thank them for being supportive of our podcast. And if you are looking for a Facebook group about Disney, just general Disney, then the Crazy Disney Grammar Junkies 2.0. Is a great group. Sure. I've been in it for a while. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of Facebook groups. Yep. And what's great about this specific group is the name derives from Instagram, mm -hmm. hence the grammar. Uh, and the, a lot of the people that are members of this group are photographers or very heavily active on Instagram. Right. As I am. So I really... I enjoy the group because I actually am more active in Instagram than I am in Facebook. Right. So it's it's a really great little group. But another shout out that we wanted to make is to Paul Martini at digitalmagicshop.net. He's the one that made this great little uh, lyric for us, the jingle. Yeah, the intro so, and the outro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need some music work done, then you can contact Paul Martini. And again, he is at digitalmagicshop.net. Dot net. So now that we got the shout outs out of the way, let's talk about our subscribers. Sure. If you are a subscriber. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you very much. And you can ignore us for the next, you know, 60 seconds. But for the new people that are here, welcome. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Glad Absolutely. you found us. Hit that subscribe button. Exactly. If, you ha if you're finding us in your podcast, you can also find us on two grown ups and a mouse dot com or on social media at two grown ups and a mouse. Yep. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those places. So please make sure that you've subscribed. We do have new episodes every week. And we're on YouTube. Yeah, that's right. We are now on YouTube. That's right. But today's episode is going to be about Disney Cruise Line, mm -hmm. about the Disney Dream. But there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the Disney Cruise Lines. Yeah. So it will be a multi-episode discussion. Yeah. Not necessarily the next couple episodes, but just be prepared that we're going to talk about it, get a large portion of it, and then whenever we decide, we're going to talk about it some more. Right. Because this is a real passion of ours. Mm -hmm. And we got married in 2007, and when we got married, we went on a cruise. Yeah, we did. To hell. Well, it wasn't a Disney cruise. No, it literally went to hell. On the Cayman Islands, they well, have a we, city called Hell. We stopped there, yes. So, yes, it was a cruise to Hell. But we um, went on this cruise. It was the first cruise I had been on, I believe. Well, you'd been on boats before. I'd been on boats before. I'd never gone on a cruise before. Right. I don't know if you had gone on a cruise before. No, I'd been on cruises before. Right. That. No, that was my first real cruise. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've been on ships. I've been on the, you know, when you go out on a Friday or Saturday night. They used to have more of them. They put, they they aren't really around anymore where you could go gambling. Right. You know, they just take you out into the open water, right. however far they have to go. I've been on those before. So being on a ship was not an issue. But we said, sure, it's our honeymoon. We'll try a cruise. So we went on a cruise. And we're not even going to name the cruise line because it's irrelevant. The only thing that's important is it was not a Disney cruise. That's right. What is important is I got norovirus. Yep. Not fun. No. Wasn't fun for you either. Not really. No. We stopped at Cozumel and I was quarantined to the ship. 
Well, you were sleeping that whole day too, so. Well, yeah, they did give me a, a shot. That was a, the good part about it. They gave me a shot that helped me sleep. So I slept from that morning until the next morning. You Pretty know, I, rest, I rested on and off. So it was not a, a great experience, unfortunately. But we didn't totally swear off cruises due to that. Or I didn't totally swear off cruises due to that. Right. I said, okay, we can try another one. So in 2016... Yep. We went on a cruise mm -hmm. and we booked it with our friends yep. who have two kids yep. who are eight at the time were eight and five. Right. And we opted for the four night cruise. Right. This w happened to, it happened to happen, <laughs> it happened <laughs> to have happened that a hurricane was looming yep. in the distance. Now, if you live in, the central U.S., you don't have as much warning or notice when there's a tornado coming right. or inclement weather. But when there's a hurricane, they can they know about it a few days out. Sure. Only they can't predict with 100 percent certainty what path the hurricane is going to take. Right. And that was the problem with with ours is supposed to go a little further east than it did. Right. We weren't sure exactly where it was going to go. Right. And. Uh, the days leading up to our trip, we didn't even know if our trip was going to get canceled or not. That's true. So it was a little bit um, stressful, I guess, for lack of a better word. Right. But ultimately, they did take us on our cruise because when you are on a cruise ship, if there is inclement weather, nine times out of ten, they can go around it. Sure. So we got on the ship. They knew the hurricane was out there. They knew the hurricane was going to hit the Bahamas, right? which was our itinerary. Right. So from the time we stepped on the ship, they knew that they were going to change the itinerary and we were going to Mexico. Right. But we only they, knew we were going to one port in Mexico correct. at the time. Correct. They didn't know until we got on the ship on Monday. They didn't know until Wednesday that... The next day, they were gonna we were gonna go back to Mexico, to a different port, right? And that the port was gonna be closed. That Port Canaveral was gonna be closed on the Friday that we were supposed to come home. Well, the storm was actually affecting the Florida coast on that Friday, which is why they delayed us that extra day because the storm came in a little further west and and kind of rode up the coast. So it didn't it didn't do a lot of major damage, but it rode up the coast on Friday, which is the day we were. That we would have originally been scheduled to go into port, which obviously they weren't going to do. So, right. So, we ended up getting five nights for the cost of four. Yep. But that's another story. Yeah. That that in and of itself. I mean, it was great, and, and Disney handled it great. I mean, it was really a fantastic experience, and because of that, that's why we've since been on additional cruises. Right. No, that, yeah. that was that was a we we lucked out because we were on the inaugural single only time one time only special cruise to mexico on the disney dream exactly but but that made us really love it the way they handled everything now fortunately for us like i said we got one night for free mm -hmm. unfortunately for the cruise that was supposed to come after us a three-night cruise because the the disney dream basically most of the year right. they do four night cruises monday to friday yep. and they do three night cruises friday to monday Yep. And they continually do that. Four night, three night, four night, three night, four night, three night. Right. Once in a while, they'll change the itinerary a little bit. They'll do a double dip in their private island. Well, there's a, there's a couple of five night cruises in the middle. But other than that, it's... But the majority of the year... Three and four nights. Three and four nights. So because our cruise got extended by a day because they couldn't bring us back to port, right. the cruise that was supposed to follow us ended up getting canceled. And that was really unfortunate for them. But Disney gave everybody, whether you had insurance or not, they gave everyone on that three-night cruise a 100% refund yep. plus 20% off a future cruise. Right. And I thought that was great sure. because, I mean, Disney didn't have a choice. What were they supposed to do? It was like it was a no-win situation. I believe at that same hurricane, one of their seven-night cruises, they turned into a six-night cruise. Yes. But that's a little bit different. And they did give them a discount as well, you know, yeah, to compensate. But, you know, to, to change a seven-night cruise to a six-night cruise, it's sad. It's unfortunate. You're losing a day. 
but you're still could have a great cruise because you're there for six nights mm -hmm. to change a three night cruise to a two night cruise. They just didn't feel that anybody would well, they enjoy would, it enough. They wouldn't, they wouldn't start a cruise that way, right? They wouldn't take off. Plus the, you know, the whole cruise was supposed to take off on Friday. You know, we didn't get back till Saturday and later in the afternoon. So they weren't going to turn around and load it back up just so, just to deliver everybody back on Monday morning. Right. So, so we really locked out. But if you are not familiar, Disney currently has four ships. Yep. They have the Fantasy and the Dream, which they call sister ships because right. they're the same size ship. And they also have the Wonder and the Magic, right. which are a little bit smaller. And the, but they are also sister ships. And they are also sister ships because they're the same size. Right. And they are building more ships as we speak. Three more. And what year is that supposed to come out? 2020? I yeah, think. 20, 21, and 22. Right, but they still haven't named them. No, not yet. So, every, you know, people are projecting what they think the names are going to be. Like, people are saying maybe it'll be Disney Imagine or... Oh, well, you know, you can, you can speculate go... Speculate all, all you want. <laughs> all over the place with those, not, those things. But nothing is official. Nothing has been announced. So right. we are eagerly awaiting to hear what the names are going to be, what the itineraries are going to be. But I'm pretty sure that those ships, well, I believe they announced it already. Those ships are going to be just a drop bigger than the Fantasy and the Dream. Yes. Not much bigger, but but a drop bigger. I think they're a drop bigger. I think they don't actually hold that many more people, though. Right. So I think it's just going to be more room for activities. Well, talking about being a drop bigger, the Dream is 1,115 feet long. Yep. So almost four football fields. Yep. Just under a long way yes and it's 14 decks mm -hmm. 1250 staterooms well it's 14 public decks we don't get to see the private crew areas <laughs> but there, there are 1250 staterooms that uh -huh. hold up to 4,000 passengers yep 150 are inside staterooms and 1100 are outside staterooms now with those inside staterooms disney has something really neat yep and they are Actually, one of the they are the first cruise line to offer indoor stateroom windows. No, they're called magic portholes. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> that's it. Because obviously, it's not a window because that would be really weird looking out into the uh, into the into the hallway. But it is a a magic porthole that, that basically they're showing out. It's a TV that they're showing off the a camera off the side of the ship, so it appears you are in a outside stateroom they're even better though because you can literally have nemo swimming across your tv that's true <laughs> you're not going to get that in another cruise line no so a lot of people because i am as i've spoken about uh, i am in a few facebook groups and some of them are cruise line facebook groups because we like the disney cruise line so we're in the disney cruise line facebook groups and a lot of people say i'm not in the room that often i would rather save the money stay in an inside stateroom sure. and spend that money on other things. Right. Personally, I wouldn't do it. No, I, I like to see the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be able to step out onto the balcony, right. enjoy the fresh air outside. Now, granted, you can go onto another deck and do that, but it's nice being able to do it in your bathrobe. Sure. You know, just go out when you wake up in the morning, go on the balcony, drink coffee out there if you want, whatever you want to do. But a lot of people do it, and it's a great way to save a little bit of money if that's what you want to do. I mean, everyone's different. You know, some people like bigger rooms. Some people like smaller rooms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, you and I like bigger rooms. Sure. Now, on the Fantasy and on the Dream, mm -hmm. which the Dream is the one that we've been on, the largest room they have is a one-bedroom. Right. Yeah. On the on the on, dream. On the, the fantasy. On the dream. It's right. a one bedroom. In order to stay in a one bedroom, you have to stay concierge level. Well, but there's two one bedrooms, two types of one bedrooms. Oh, you mean the handicap accessible? Three types of one bedrooms. Because <laughs> there's the the royal suites. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> which are one bedroom. They are. There are. They are only one bedroom. Right. Which is you would think they might actually make that a, like a two bedroom, but it's it's just a one bedroom, uh, and then. As you said, there's a there's the, the normal one bedroom, and then they have a handicap accessible one, which I think is is actually a different category of room, even though it's ba it's still the same basic layout right. as the the normal one bedroom. Right. And I believe the largest 
number of rooms you would be able to get on a Disney ship would be a two bedroom, but that would be on the magic or the wonder. So for us, we wanted to experience one bedroom. So we did go concierge just in order to get that extra space. Sure. Of course, being that we don't have children and we're only paying for two people, it did basically double the cost of our cruise because our when we first booked the cruise, we booked for a traditional stateroom. Right. And then we looked and we saw the the perks of going concierge and we said, okay, we'll try that. And it literally doubled the price of the cruise. Sure. But it also literally doubled the size of the room. Uh, yeah, and then some. So we got we got double the space. Yes, it cost more money, but it was very economical for us since there were only two of us. Right. Had there been three or four of us, then it would have been a different financial situation. Right. And I mean, the other reason we looked at it was because we wanted to maximize any potential enjoyment, considering the horrific nature of our first cruise. So, right. Right. So here, here's a way to spoil ourselves and make sure that we we enjoy this one. Well, you know, it's really funny because there are people in the Facebook groups, you know, that are specific for cruise lines that are say, oh, I would never do concierge. It's such a waste of money. And that's their their business. That's their choice. I don't fault them for feeling that way. If they want to feel that way, that's fine. The only thing I fault them for is trying to push their beliefs on other people. Because I equivocate it to sometimes you stay in a value resort, sometimes you stay in a moderate resort, right. and sometimes you stay in a deluxe resort. Everyone has a different budget. Everyone has a different list of priorities of what they want to attain sure. from their vacations. And you and I personally we have no problem staying in a valley resort when we go to Walt Disney World. No. Because when we go to Walt Disney World, we do it so often. It's just weekend getaways. It's, you know, it, it, they're great and we love them. But we don't need anything fancy or over the top. We literally just need a place to keep our stuff and to rest at night. Or or, or a break in the day. But, but we basically, we'd never make you, we never make use of the extra amenities that that the nicer resorts give us. I, or the the equivocal would be like a club level room would be equivocal to a concierge room on the ship. Uh, yeah, even going to that far, but uh, although even that, I think those are probably still a little more. But but we just don't we don't use really any of the amenities in the hotels when we stay, just because we go up so often. We don't go in the pools. We don't we don't go do laundry. We don't need the business centers. We don't need we don't need all those things that that the nicer hotels might give us. Right. Other than, you know, the the rooms are maybe a little bigger and, you know, maybe there's a nicer sheets on the bed or something, you know, which is nice, but it's not, that's not a high priority for us. Right. Whereas when we booked the cruise, we said, this is a true vacation. Right. We really want to indulge ourselves. And so we opted to go concierge. So our experience might be a little bit different than other experiences, but everybody that I've talked to in general, they love them the cruises if they go on a disney cruise the majority of them love them uh we have friends that have one son who's five they just went on a disney cruise at the beginning of august Mm -hmm. and loved it and their son had never been on a cruise before you know that was the first one they took as a three-person family right but the couple had been on many many cruises and even after having been on many cruises, had great experiences with other cruise lines, really enjoyed them. They really enjoyed everything that Disney had to offer. Right. Well, it's, it's, I get that question a lot as well. It's kind of like the question of you two are adults. Why do you go to Disney so much? So we get, I get the question of why do you go on a Disney cruise? It must be full of kids. And well, cruises these days, all of them have kids on it, but Disney makes a good a good effort on keeping the kids involved in kid friendly activities. Right. Well, our podcast is aimed at adults, so right. we don't really talk about the kids stuff, but we can kind of glaze over that really fast. They do have kids clubs for different right. age groups, and we didn't even really look at the details of this because again, we're, we're geared towards adults. Sure. If you want the details on the kids clubs, go to DisneyCruiseLine.com. It's a great website. It's going to give you really detailed information, Right. but we can say that there is, if your child is under three and, 
and not potty trained. Any child under three, though, you have to use the nursery, which right. they currently charge ten dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's best to book in advance if you can. Right. Um, but people love the nursery. They get personalized attention. They take great care of them. Then they have the kids club for three to 11. They have to be pot fully potty trained. They will not help your child go to the bathroom. So if you have a three or four year old that is not potty trained, you would still have to use the nursery for right. them. But. As long as your child is potty trained, the kids clubs for three and above is included in the price of your cruise. You don't have to pay any extra. And it's basically open all day. It's from, you know, like early in the morning until I want to say midnight. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's very convenient for people. And so they have the, the kids club up until 11. Then they have like the tweens one, which it's, I believe, like 11 to 15. Then they have the club for 15 to 18. And what they also have, which is great, is a club for those that are 18 to 20. Right. Because they're too young to go into the bars. And it's just great how Disney has those separations. But I do know I've heard of the making exceptions because maybe you have a 10 year old and a 12 year old brother and sister, and you don't want to separate them. Right. Sometimes they'll let the 10 year old age up into the next club or the 12 year old age down again, because we don't, we're not geared towards kids. We don't have all the details on that. You would, you know, your best option to be go to disneycruiseline.com and they will give you great information, but it is nice to know that they have that. And like Andrew just said, it's great because it keeps the majority of kids occupied. So you don't see a whole bunch of kids running around by themselves on the different decks. Right. So that is definitely one of the advantages of taking a Disney cruise. As you said, we probably see less kids. Uh, yeah. Fine. Now, the friends that we went with, their kids weren't enamored of the kids club. Right. And that will happen as well. But sure. I think more often than not, at least from what I've read, more people, their kids really love it. You know, if you if you sell your kids on it and say you're going to love it and you're going to have a great time, then hopefully they're going to listen to that enthusiasm and hopefully they're going to, you know, latch on to it and go enjoy it so you can enjoy adult time and sure. go find the adult things to do. Some people worry about going on cruises because they think they're going to get seasick. But before you go on the cruise, you can bring the sea bands. Yep. You can take the Dramamine or, you know, you can do so many different things. Everyone's different. Some people use the patch behind their ear. Well, it's just a matter of, I mean, if you think you're going to, if you're prone to it, it might be worth going to the doctor and getting a, a prescription for, because I think some of the patches you need to have a, a prescription for the the C band and Dramamine, those are all those are over the counter, obviously. What if you go on the ship and you forgot to bring it? Oh, they they sell all that. Of course they do. They don't want you to be. They don't want you to be sick. <laughs> and you know what? The prices for those items was not that bad. No, it wasn't. Because I remember looking at Sea Safe, which right. is the sea lice lotion, right? And it was approximately the same price on board as it was on Amazon. Well, we saw a couple of instances of that where the, uh, I think some of the uh, over-the-counter, you know, like the aspirin and Tylenols and stuff were, were also not, they weren't quite drugstore cheap, but they weren't what you're, you know, you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to buy aspirin on the ship. It's probably going to be $12 of serving or something like that. And, and it wasn't, so. Yeah, nothing astronomical. It was nice right. that they had it available. So if you were to go on a Disney cruise and you forgot it, you don't have to worry about it. So nothing astronomical. The prices are pretty decent. But mal de mm -hmm. is not exactly seasickness, but that is when you get off the ship, but your body feels like you are still on the ship and you kind of feel that swaying motion. Right. And I did experience that on our first Disney cruise. Sure. I believe, and I could be mistaken, but I believe it was because, as we said, it got extended to five, ni five nights instead of four nights. Mm -hmm. And we opted basically to stay on the ship at both ports, except for one hour. Right. We, we, didn't, know, we, did, we, we didn't get off for very long. Right. We did get off the ship, but we were literally off the ship and back on it within an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. But right. out of five days, that meant that only about two hours were spent on land. Mm -hmm. So by the time we got off the ship, I kind of, you know, still had sea legs, didn't have land legs. So I did experience the, the mal de barque, but
but some people get worried that they might not like being on board a ship right? because they're not going to have access to the car. They're not going to have access to land. I was just talking. I said that in quotes because it was, you know, Facebook message, someone from the purse group. And she was saying she really wanted to try a Disney cruise, but her husband didn't want to. So I was trying to sell her on a three night. And the, the three net is the perfect cruise for somebody that that is concerned about right and i sold it to her in the way that you get on the ship on friday morning or you know friday whatever time you get on it's not going to leave land until four o'clock you're going to be on the water from four o'clock overnight but as soon as you wake up in the morning you know by 8 a.m you're going to be at land again right. and then you can stay on land for me until about four and then you're this is Saturday. So then four o'clock Saturday, you get back on the ship and the ship it goes on the water overnight. And then when you wake up Sunday morning by about eight o'clock, you'll be back on land. Right. And then you can stay on land until at least, you know, about four o'clock. And then you get back on the ship and from four o'clock until overnight on Sunday, you'll be on the water. But then you wake up Monday and you get off the boat and you're done. Right. So I, I explained it that way to explain to her husband because I had a feeling that that's probably what he was hesitant about. Well, it's, uh, as as somebody that's been offshore in a boat, that's usually the number one concern, or that that I don't I don't don't want to necessarily call it fear, but it's that that's a, the apprehension of not being able to see land, kind of that you know it's a it's a mix of a control this that and the other thing but the other thing you could you could do is also recommend that they do it during daylight savings time because the sun will be going down just that hour earlier as well so the boat leaves at four o'clock but the sun is going down at five thirty. you mean when it's not daylight savings time all right well yeah whatever <laughs> backwards daylight savings time <laughs> the sun goes down later but he, but with the sun going down that much earlier, you're you're basically only out of sight of land until it's dark, for very very short amount of time. You're just not you're just not going to notice it. So right. So that was what I had explained to her and for you and I because of our work schedules. As much as I would love to do a longer cruise with Disney Cruise Lines, where we are right now at this time in our lives, the three night cruises are great. Because we only have to take off Friday and Monday. Right. And and we're basically, because the, the three-night cruise is Friday to, to Monday. And it doesn't leave until, like you said, 4 o'clock on Friday. And it it's back in port at 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday. So technically, we, we have to take the days off, but we're still easily reachable. Right. Cheaply reachable. <laughs> right. <laughs> Without having to pay the extra because we're right. out on the sea or anything. Right. So it's a great way to get in the cruises without having to take off a lot of time from work. And of course, we are very, we have the advantage of living in South Florida. So instead of doing one seven night cruise and having to fly in and pay for the airline, we could do two three night cruises. So right. we're basically getting that same, you know, we're getting six nights, but we can do it every six months instead of doing it, you know, one seven night once a year. Right, right. So there are those advantages. Um, because if you do go and join any of the, the cruise Facebook groups, you'll have a lot of the people, oh, the three nights are too short. Oh, the four nights are too short. You have to do a seven night. And yes, they are a little on the short side, but they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Sure. And they're definitely great getaways. There's nothing wrong with doing three nights, four nights, seven nights, whatever your budget works, whatever your desire is some people because they love castaway key so much they'll do back-to-back -back cruises right and they'll do a three night followed by a four night so that they can go to castaway key twice right so everyone's different um i mean i would love to do another four night cruise mm -hmm. but to do a four night they're monday through friday you have to take off five days of work so i'd rather just do another seven you know try a seven night sure take the same five days off work to do a seven night so, like I said, for right now, for us, the three three night cruises are great. But you know what else Disney does that not every not every cruise line does? What the membership? Right. Once you go on your first cruise, you become a Silver Castaway Club member. Right. That's after your first cruise. After your fifth cruise, you're gold. After your tenth cruise, you're platinum. And this membership brings you a couple of different advantages. Right. So 
when you get it, it's kind of funny the way they do it though when you get on your second cruise now mm-hmm. that you're a silver castaway member they give you a lanyard right why they don't give everybody a lanyard <laughs> you know the the newbies because a lot of people love having the lanyards to put their key to the world card which is your room key right. but it's also how you charge things right so why they don't give away the lanyards to everyone on the first cruise eh. that's their business it's just kind of funny but they give lanyards to silver club members they also typically give some kind of a bag a shoulder beach bag we got on our second cruise and on our third cruise we got a backpack but one of those sh- that go cross body backpacks right so it was kind of nice that we didn't get the same bag sure. over and over again and then the gold members get the same as the silver plus right i, I think i want to say that you know last t- now most recently they were getting everything plus like a turvis or a, a tumbler or something right right the platinum get everything that the silver and gold get plus Sure. But the other advantage is having your different membership level determines when you can do your booking. Right. So you book your cruise and you pay for your cruise, but you need to wait to book the excursions. And dining. And dining. Right. Or well, sp- and, or spa services. And, and, anything that anything on the ship that needs to be booked. So it's right. the various classes, the spa. Right. The... So platinum can book it 120 days out. Right. Gold can book it 105 days out. Mm-hmm. Silver can book it 90 days out. And of course, if you're new, if you're if it's your first Disney cruise, you have to wait until 75 days out. Right. And that's when you can go ahead and book. That is another benefit of staying concierge, even though it's not a membership level but if you pay for a concierge room you can book it 125 days out right so you get to book everything even ahead of the platinum cruise cruisers who have been on 10 plus cruises right so that's a definite benefit to going concierge um, especially if you want to get a cabana on castaway key but we're not going to really talk about the cabanas or castaway key because there's so much to do on castaway we're going to save that for another episode right so but what we will talk about is the restaurants. There's a lot of them. Now, out of the the main dining rotation, that, or MDR, mm-hmm. do you have a favorite of the three restaurants on the Dream? Probably Animator's Palette. Yeah. That's the... Uh... Mine too. There are three MDR's, main dining rotation restaurants. There are Animator's Palette, Royal Palace, and Enchanted Garden. Right. But we'll start with Animator's because... You just said it's your favorite, and I said it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. So the theme, as the name says, is kind of cartoons. Right. Animation. Yep. They do have interactive TVs where Crush interacts with the diners. Yep. And it's really cute. They have different animations and stuff going on while you're eating. Now, we are disadvantaged on the dream because on the longer cruises... In animators, they have where you can actually like draw Mm -hmm. and they put it up on the screen. Right. They don't do that on the three or four night cruises, unfortunately. Right. But it has a really great, I want to say red, white, yellow, black theme. Yeah. You know, kind of Mickey looking, animators looking TVs throughout the restaurant. And of course, the the, uh, servers, Mm -hmm. their outfits match the restaurant that they're in, right. which I believe is also different than what other cruise lines do. Right. Your server rotates with you. Right. Well, Disney was the first to do this this uh, dining rotation system because before, typically on a cruise, there was just a main dining area and you were given a time and you showed up and you ate and, and that was it. But the next day you went to that same restaurant again and so on and so forth. Disney's the one that said okay well tonight we're going to put you in this restaurant tomorrow we're going to put you in this next restaurant you know the next night we're going to put you in the next restaurant and then you rotate around and then obviously as you said the your server rotates with you right so it's really great again especially for families you know Mm -hmm. because the servers are great about making connections with the kids right but they're also great about making connections with the adults yeah when you think about how many people they have to see (laughs) Yeah, they're they're really great. You have a head waiter who's, I'm going to say like the host 
the, the, the head well, waiter. You, you have a host. Oh, is that okay? That's and then it. you have the head waiter and the assistant waiter. Right. And then, so, and then each of those guys or girls, whichever it may be, uh, have different amount of, amounts of people. So the, the host has the most number of people to, to deal with because he's really only. He only, or she. He or she. <laughs> <laughs> you, you only see that, you know, they, they'll come in and they'll seat see you and. Uh, and come around maybe once or twice, and I haven't, then obviously the, the head waiter and then the assistant come at various times. So right, but animator's palette is a lot of fun. One day we'll have to try a longer cruise so we can try the you know try the the drawing that they right. do. But the one of the other restaurants is Royal Palace, mm -hmm. which is princess themed, you know, right. Cinderella ish. Yeah type theme and the uh the outfits of the servers of course match even the bread baskets in there kind of look like little carriages right yeah everything was is themed that way as opposed to you know as animator's palace looked more you know like you, all the way down to the 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 table was you know the the little cup that looked like a brush thing and and all those oh. and then at royal palace it changes to uh, to be that royal theming, right? Well, that's why I said Cinderella e yeah. because the bread basket, you know, was like a carriage from right. Cinderella. And Enchanted Garden has a it. It does look very garden like. It's very white and green, right? You know, it. The first time we dined in Enchanted Garden was Pirates Night. Uh, yeah, right. So. It was a little bit of a different experience because it was Pirates Night, so our servers were dressed like pirates. Correct. <laughs> so we didn't really get the theming, whereas, uh, again, and this was on our first cruise, which was extended to five nights, they did bring us back to Enchanted Garden, so then mm -hmm. we got to experience it in the quote-unquote normal right. setting. Um, but if you do go on a cruise, I would definitely recommend that you check out all of the different restaurants because they mm -hmm. all have different theming. Sure. Now we went on a, one of the cruises. We went. We took our moms. Right. And we wanted to dine in Paulo and Remy, which are the adult-only pay extra restaurants. Right. But what we did was when we first got on board the ship, we were able to eat in Enchanted Garden for lunch. For lunch, mm -hmm. because it happened to be open, so we went there for lunch with them. So they got to experience that restaurant. Right. That night. We went to Animator's Palette. Right. So they got to experience that restaurant. Yep. The following, it was a three night cruise. The following morning, we did Paulo brunch. Mm -hmm. And the following night, we did Paulo dinner. Right. But the next day on Sunday morning, fortunately, Royal Palace was open for breakfast. Right. So they got to eat lunch at Enchanted Garden, dinner at Animator's Palette, and, and breakfast at Royal Palace. Right. Which, you know, I believe they might have had Animator's Palette open for lunch or for breakfast, but when it's open for lunch or for breakfast, they don't have the the uh, crush interaction right. that they do at dinner time. So it was great that they got to see all three restaurants, but they still got to go to Paulo with us. But because especially your mom, she was like, "Ah, oh, kids, right? I don't want to see kids. And we were laughing because we're like, it is a Disney cruise. You are going to come across a few children. Wow. That is that is going to happen. But we were able to experience, you know, to get them to experience all the restaurants without having to be around the kids too 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 often. Right, right. Yeah, they saw they saw all three of them. But for people that don't want to do those restaurants, because there are two seatings, there's an earlier seating and a later seating. Right. I don't have the exact times, but I want to say it's something around. 5:45 and 8 o'clock uh, something <laughs> give or take cuz it's it they revolve with the show times obviously right if you have the earlier dining then you would dine early and after you dined you would go see the show if you opted to see the show right if you have the later dining you would see the show first and then after the show is over then you would go dine right but some people that doesn't fit their schedule sure they don't really want to do whatever dining they've been assigned to there are other options for dining, such as cabanas, which is on deck 11, right. which is typically a buffet. 
Yes. I think sometimes at night, though, when they're open, they have a server. I someone waiting on you. We, we never ate there right. at night. We only ate there in earlier parts of the day when it was set up as a buffet. Right. But also on deck 11 is Flo's. And in the Flo's area is Luigi's Pizza, mm-hmm. Tomater's Grill, Fillmore's Favorites, excuse me, Fillmore's Favorites, all quick service. One of those, you can get little pre-made salads. One of them, you can get hot dogs. One of them, you can get pizza. They have a, a whole bunch of quick service options. Right, yeah. It's, it's slices of pizza, and then it's it's grill, which yeah. is a, a pizza, or a hamburgers, hot dogs. Right. I think they had bratwursts. But it's real grab and go. Yeah. You know, it's not, I don't really think they do too much made to order at those stations. Um, though, if you do have an allergy right. or a need, I'm sure that they would accommodate you. If right. you said, I'm allergic to whatever, then they could make it fresh for you. But generally, those are the dining areas that are grab and go. Right. Now, it's like the burgers are, are pre-made or, well, how do you, how do you say that? Um, they're not cooking the burger and then putting it on a bun and giving it to you. The burger is, was co- has been cooked and it's sitting for however long. I mean, it's not, they don't let it sit, sit for too long, but it's not, it's not, like you said, made to order. Like the salads, though, uh, they, they throw them together real quick. Uh, the sandwiches, they can throw together real quick, but it's not, not cooked to order, I guess. Cooked to order is probably a better description. Right. <laughs> and also on deck 11 is ice cream and frozen treats and smoothies. Right. And that is open almost all day. Uh, yeah, I think they, those close at midnight. Right. And the ice cream is E-Y-E scream. Right. Ice cream. Uh, and Mike Wazowski, he's standing out in front of it. Right. And they have usually vanilla, chocolate, and then I think I want to say there was like a strawberry... Or the swirl. Some right. people claim they saw banana on board. I don't, or I might have seen banana on board, but uh, but you can also get that on Castaway Key. Right. The different flavors, uh, like the more tropical flavors on Castaway Key. Because sure. so, someone told me they found mango, and on our cruises, I never saw mango ice cream on any of our cruises. But no, not you uh, never know. Not not in a, not in one of the quick service. You never know. Uh, but definitely, you know, chocolate, vanilla. And another flavor, right. you know, be it banana, be it strawberry, be it whatever they have that day. Mm-hmm. And they have cones that you can, you know, just grab a cone, make your own ice cream, yep. walk away. And they and, have cups. And this is all included in the price right. of your cruise. Now, what's also included. And this is the big one. is soda. No, that's not even what I was talking about. Oh, well. But that is a big one. It is a big one. Soda is included in the price of your cruise. Not yeah. all cruises do that. I think Disney started that, and it's a great amenity to have. Sure. Especially for someone like Andrew, who drinks a lot of soda. Uh, it is fountain soda, but still, they include it in the price of your cruise. Right. No, I was going to say, on deck four of the Dream, mm-hmm. they have a little coffee shop. Right. Which, if you want to get a cappuccino, latte, you know, specialty coffees, chai tea... You can go purchase the beverage on deck four. Right. But you could also get, at no additional charge, Mm -hmm. the pastries. Right. They have a little pastry counter there. And depending on, I I don't know what their prerequisite is, because I've heard people saying, no, it was served yourself. And I've heard people saying, no, they got it for me. So it'll, you know, I don't want to say right. it's a serve yourself area because you might go on a cruise and it may be, no, let me get that for you. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, when you, when you see it, you'll, you'll understand because it's the, the pastry counter is kind of split off from where you ordered your coffee from. The first time so, I so saw you kinda, it. You kind of think it's serve yourself, but maybe they're going to yell at you or maybe it just depends on whoever's up there that day. No, the first time that I saw it on the first cruise, I thought it was something you had to pay for. Right. But it's not, it's just another area that you can go get sweets at. That's no extra fee, but there is a place on the dream that you can pay extra for sweets. Yep. And I don't remember the name of it. Vanilla peas. That's right. (laughs) Um, It is an ice cream shop. And, and uh, yeah, 
And candy shop. A lot of candy. They have a lot of candy and a lot of ice cream. And what's really great about Vanilla Peas is you can order ice cream mm -hmm. and they will deliver it to your main dining rotation. Oh. Our see? friends did that on the first cruise. Oh. I, they ordered like the car. Right. You can order the ice cream car Sunday, you know, Wreck -It, from Wreck-It Ralph, Vanilla right. Pea, Wreck-It Ralph. And you can get that ice cream delivered as your dessert. Well, see, I did not know that. How do you not know these things? Well, we never did it. Because <laughs> we, we go to the, the next subject, which is uh, the adult exclusive restaurants. Right. And on the Disney Dream and on the Disney Fantasy, they have two. Right. As we already said, the Magic and the Wonder are a little bit smaller. Right. So the Magic and Wonder do not have two. Right. But on the Dream and the Fantasy, they have both Paulo and Remy. Correct. On the Magic and the Wonder, they only have Paulo. Right. And both of these restaurants are adult exclusive, adult only. Mm -hmm. You have to be 18 or older, no exceptions. Right. And in addition to being adult only, they are an additional fee. Right. However, because you pay for your food, you know, your food is included in the price of your cruise. Even mm -hmm. though they're charging you extra for these restaurants, you are not paying as much for them as were you to go to these restaurants on land right. and pay, you know, get get a bill for them. Right, right. The current price of Palo is thirty dollars per person. Right. The current price for Remy is ninety five per person. Right. But Remy is the equivalent of, let's say, a Victorian Alberts. Yep. At the Grand Floridian, you know, right. just uh, which is the Gloria and Alberts, Gloria, Victoria and Alberts. I'm putting Grand Floridian and Victoria <laughs> together, and I got Gloria. Victorian Alberts is a five diamond uh, AAA -A 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 restaurant. Oh, right. It, it's a triple A, five diamond. Tri tri but what's, what's the word? They're rated, triple A rated. Right. Five diamond rated. So, and Remy is equivocal to that. Yes. And when you go to Victorian Alberts, you pay a little bit more than that. Uh, yeah, you, you do. And then you also, well, actually, uh, there's there's upcharges in both. So, yeah. but it's a um, little more expensive to eat it at, at Victorian Alberts. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think I think it's uh, I think it's thirty or forty dollars more. Right. Maybe uh, maybe not a lot more, but it is a little right. bit more. Because, like I said, they're giving you a slight discount because you are already paying for food as part of your cruise. Right. So they're giving you that little bit of a discount. Sure. Even though they're charging you extra for it. It is not for everybody. No. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, Andrew and I enjoy fine dining. Yep. So we enjoy going to places such as Remy. But, you know, some people will never experience Remy, and that's okay. Right. Because, as I said, it's not for everyone. Now, Paulo... On the other hand, I personally think that adults should at one time or another, not necessarily on every cruise, but if you get a chance to go to Palo, to go to their brunch or go to dinner. Well, honestly, you should do both. Well, uh, yeah. you, you, can't, <laughs> you can't do both on, theoretically could do both on the same cruise. Um, there, there are two different experiences, so it's definitely worth trying both. A lot of people, the, the brunch is much more known uh but and you're, you're not a fan of it you prefer the dinner i think the dinner is is shouldn't be missed right you, you for, for me for me i i would say go to the dinner before the brunch see and i enjoy the brunch and like my mom really enjoyed the brunch because she loved the desserts available wow. at the brunch <laughs> which were not available at the dinner right. you know it's a totally different menu not totally different but totally different menu. well it's 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 italian uh inspired uh uh menu uh but the the menu uh, the, for brunch you can you can choose from uh kind of a dessert or a lunch plate you mean a breakfast or lunch yeah you said dessert or lunch now you're doing aj speak wow yeah <laughs> uh, but i knew what you meant all right well hopefully everybody else did <laughs> yeah well now they do because i told them all right no but actually that is a point that i wanted to mention the first time we went to Palo, we went 
I want to say it was like a 1030 reservation right? because it was brunch. And I was thinking we're going to have, you know, for me, brunch is breakfast. Right. So it was a little bit early and they had things at the time such as chicken parm and veal well, or what all these really heavy lunch items. Well, we should we should go back because that was the, the the hurricane cruise. So because on a three and a four day cruise, what happened, the itinerary is you leave the next day you're in port the day after that you're in port and then if you're on a three day then the the the, the last day you're obviously you're in port if you're on the four day the last day is a, is a sea day so when we booked the reservation for brunch we originally were thinking we were going to be at nassau that day as opposed to it was a sea day no, so but- we were we we kind of thought going earlier because we might want to get off the ship because of it being in port Right. That might have been the case. But unless you, you know, of course, if you've been to Apollo Brunch before, then you'll know what you prefer. Right. But I definitely recommend going at, you know, 11 or 1130 or later so that you're ready to try the breakfast and the lunch items. Sure. Because when we went and there were all these things that looked really appetizing, mm-hmm. but because it was early, it was like, I don't really want to have breakfast items and chicken parm. Right. Which I heard was really great. And it is, re- the chicken parm is really good. Right. So I would definitely recommend doing, you know, a slightly later brunch if it's your first time there, just so you can experience, because you can eat breakfast at any time of the day. I mean, I had breakfast for dinner last week. Right. But, you know, sometimes you don't want something so heavy. Sure early in the morning. So if it's your first time at Apollo, my recommendation, go a little bit later. And then once you've experienced it, then you'll know what's going to work best for you. And as Andrew said, you know, definitely try both. They're two totally different experiences. Remy also has a brunch that we have not tried yet. We have done Remy dinner a couple of times, but we haven't done the brunch yet. So we'll have to try that. Well, we've also done the Remy dessert party. They do have a dessert party, which is another thing to talk about. Right. But there's so much to discuss about Paulo and Remy and the dessert that I think that we should save that and we'll go into more details sure. in a future podcast. Right. We can really, really get into it because I'm getting tired. So on that note, thank you for listening. Yep. Thank you for, for subscribing. Yeah, absolutely. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And... Leave us a review if you uh, in your your podcasting software. Yes, we've got we've gotten a little bit of feedback. All the feedback we've gotten have been from our personal friends, and right. that's going to be a little bit biased. And we appreciate it, and it's great, and we're really grateful that they have reached out to us and said, "Hey, this this is nice." But it's like, yeah, that's awesome. But you know us, right? So we really really do want your feedback, be it good bad and different give us your feedback tell us what you like tell us what you want to hear more of tell us what you want to hear less of sure because we would love to know if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe yep follow us on facebook instagram twitter or now you can find us on youtube but right now you can find me going to bed all right so i am going to say good night good morning well yeah i'm going to bed but maybe other people are listening in the morning and then you're saying good morning Good day, sir. Or good afternoon. How about just goodbye? Yeah, I think that's the best. So, bye. Bye.